Hey everybody, it's Martha. Welcome back. Uh, I wanted to thank new subscribers for subscribing. <laughs> and uh, I, I appreciate it very much. Um, I made this envelope journal while we were away camping this weekend. I was supposed to work on the um, lavender journal and I didn't. <laughs> So um, I grabbed a bunch of stuff as we were on the way out the door, even, even though I had my other bag packed with all the lavender stuff, um, lavender journal stuff. And um, I grabbed a gallon baggie and I stuffed a bunch of stuff in it. And two of the things were two envelopes like this. Um, there are card envelopes, you know, they came with greeting cards inside. And... Um, so I was lucky enough to have two the same size, and I'm lucky again. I That's the last of my greeting card envelopes, so um, I only had two, four that were, you know, matching sets. So anyway, um, what I did was, this is, I've done trifold envelopes with smaller envelopes, and I've done um, altered envelopes, and several other kinds of, you know, several other things with envelopes. And what I did was... Um, I wanted to do this one a little different. I, I used book pages because I originally thought I would use this for a positivity journal. But um, I decided not to use it for that. And so this is up for sale on my Etsy shop, which <laughs> will be listed below. Um, so um, this is what I came up with. And I had this one piece of, I had two pieces of paper. I had this one, and I had this strip uh, that was one strip, and I tore it sort of in half. And then I stamped on it and stuff. And these strips I had done when I did the, um, the video with the um, inks, and I was playing with ink and water and smudging them on different papers and stuff. So that's where those papers came from. And then there's some Tracy Fox printables on there. Um, don't remember which one. And then this postcard, I can't remember who that comes from, but then I did some stamping on top of that too. Um, this strip here, I simply glued it at the bottom and up the sides, and I put a little half hole. This is a one-inch hole punch that I have. And I put that there to help keep the envelope flap shut. And this is the original envelope flap. Um, all I did was I didn't cover the crown or any of the inside paper because I thought it was I thought it was nice paper. <laughs> so I didn't cover it. Um, I did put extra strips here to reinforce because these can come apart pretty easily. But both of these pockets are accessible. Um, this one's a little tight. But you could put seed packets or whatever in there if you wanted to use this for a garden journal. Or, um, you know, I, I mean, you could figure that out. There's there's room to put stuff in there. Like I said, it's a little tight. The signature is sewn in. Um, sewn in. Uh, it's a five-hole pamphlet stitch, I believe that is called. These papers I did not cut down. They just fit inside these um, these envelopes. I did, uh, this is a piece of tea stained parchment paper. This is book pages um, and it's a, a pocket which I haven't put anything in. Um, tea stained dictionary page, tea stained doubled up page in case somebody wanted to put photos or something on there. Um, this could be gessoed on and written on. Um, tea stain. What I basically did was did every other page a uh, book page of some sort. This came out of a dried flowers book of which I have torn apart and torn apart and torn apart for the flowers. It's another gardening book page. Um, here's two pages from another book, uh, some sort of business writing book. Um, I thought this was kind of cool. This is out of a a gardening book as well the pitchfork in the soil and then flowers on the other side and then another gardening book page more doubled up dictionary pages and the center 
and then um, you know the flip side of all of those pages after sewing it in. So I thought it came out kind of cool. Um, some of these things are the first time I've done them, like sewing into the envelopes, um, using double pages like this, just sticking them in there. And uh, this, where is it? Okay, of course I can't find it now. There's a place where I put two pages together in here. This one, where I put a page like here and here. That's the first time I've done that and I really like the look. And it's just a rough journal. Like this would make a really, there's another pocket. Again, I did not put anything in it. Um, a little wrinkled. And did a bunch of stamping. And it's not, you know, it's sort of, everything faces one way or the other. Like if you flip this, this is right side up. But if you flip it over, it's upside down. It's just kind of all wonky and kind of just thrown together. And so I thought that was kind of cool. It was fun. I did this on the camping trip. And, um, you know, just sat on our... Our bed and had my glue and my punch and my papers and all that I didn't sew the signature in until we got home because I did not bring my book binding stuff um, something I'll have to learn to pack because I could have put it together but I had fun doing the collage and just you know sort of experimenting doing some stamping I brought two stamps I can only find one at the moment the other one's probably still in the bag this is the bag I brought. Oops. This is the bag I brought. I showed this in my last video. And as you can see, the lavender journal is still sitting in here. Um, now, I did grab a, a gallon plastic bag like this and put all the papers for the envelope in there. And um, that's what I did while we were gone. I didn't have that much time. Um, basically, it was raining Friday night when we arrived. And it was fine Saturday and we left Sunday instead of Monday because um, I sort of had some issues overnight uh, I woke up at like 4 30 4 45 or something and I rolled over in the bed and my entire world started spinning and I mean spinning. I grabbed onto the wall of the side of the camper and I was like, oh my goodness. I have no idea what it was. I don't know if it was because a weather front was coming through. I'm very sensitive to weather fronts. Um, I've been having some popping in one of my ears anyway for a couple weeks now. Probably longer than that. And um, yeah, it was, it was just weird. <laughs> I thought somebody had rammed into the van and it was flipping over. It, the dizzy spell was so weird. So I sort of um, I sort of took it easy the rest of that day because it really threw me for a loop. It was weird. So anyway, um, let's get on with this. Somebody on Facebook asked for a tutorial. Um, she's doing the 100-day challenge. I can't commit to that. I can't even commit to two days in a row. So good on her. Um, and so... I'm going to show the basics of how I put this together. Because if somebody's interested, I'm more than willing to show how I did it. Um, that was my first one that I'd done like that. I've done many other envelopes um, in many different styles. And I do have a video on these. I don't know if I know how to link it below. But I've done tons of envelopes, and I get such a kick out of doing them that uh, <laughs> I, I just can't seem to not do envelopes. It's like it's like a new little weird thing that I have. Um, this is another one, but the signature does not. Um, it slides in and out of the pocket. So you could do them this way, too. All I did was use some... That's not even cardstock. That's just paper. And then, you know, this could always be replaced. But I thought that came out well. This is paper from a paper pack. And no, I didn't plan to line it up like that, but I'm pretty happy it did. So, <laughs> so this was a, a smaller one that I did. Um, so it's a little bit different 
but it's sort of the same. Um, you don't have to sew the signatures in. Uh, these are all done different ways, but you can go look at that video. I believe the only one that's not in that video is this top one I just showed you. So I put those back in the box they belong in. And let's get started. So, like I said, I have two envelopes that cards came in. Um, this was a Valentine's Day card envelope from my husband. So I'm teaching him not to seal up the envelopes anymore because this was, uh, I believe, a Christmas card envelope for my granddaughter. And one of the other granddaughter's envelope is one of the ones I used on the other booklet because um, I did not lick them. <laughs> no licking envelopes. Tell the family, no licking the envelopes for the cards anymore so that you can have a really pretty edge like that. So what I did was, because this is the edge that's kind of crummy looking, and it doesn't matter, you can have two crummy ones um, because you're going to pretty much cover them up anyway. And what you're going to do is, and I hope you can see this, this is the fold line for this flap. You do not want this right down to the fold line because you need space there. So I leave, I don't know, quarter inch, eh, less, than, less than a half an inch, I think. But I leave a space between the fold line for that envelope and the bottom of the envelope you're gluing to. The other thing I wanted to tell you about is this glue stick that I picked up. Um, I believe I got this in Michaels and it's called Scotch Create and um, it's a permanent glue stick, multi-purpose, photo safe and it says it is for, where does it say it? Hmm. Well, on the package it said it was for paper and fabric. And I like this glue stick the way it's working much better than I like my um, Craft Bond all-purpose glue stick. Um, so I don't know what the difference is, but this one is working much better. Um, so I am going to just, uh, I'm looking for a flat paper towel. And I am not going to glue all the way down to this fold. I'm going to stop, and you can use whatever glue you desire. But I am going to stop shy of that. And this is this flap will be covered up by the envelope it's going on to. And the other side of it will be covered up. So even if there's a tiny tear in the flap, there is not in this one. But even if there was... Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Okay. So now I've glued that up, and I hope you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm putting this down, and I'm leaving that space that it looks like I got a little bit of glue in, but that's okay. And then I'm going to fold this over, and you see how those edges don't match? You want those edges to match, and it's hard to tell. Uh oh, the stuff dries really fast, too. But I, I want these edges to line up. Um, boy, this stuff dries really quick. Okay. And see, it doesn't even matter that they're two different, col two different shades of red. Because you're covering it up. So the next uh, task is to get out what you want to cover these in. I was going to do another one in book pages, but I don't think I'm going to now that I think about it. Um, let's see what I can pull out of my magic trick of drawers here. Find some paper I want to use up. This one out. Let's see if we can find something out of this one. Basically, what you want to do is you want to cover this. Um, I covered this side first. It's kind of more fun that way. 
The other side's a little fiddly, and this, this might get a little bit long. Um, I may even have to split it into two if I don't work faster and quit talking so much because... Um, uh, I don't know if I pulled out the right thing. If I try this, I have two of them. Instead of making this uh, too grungy and stuff, I might try that. I'll try that too. Sorry about the noise. <laughs> so, let's see. So basically, you just want to cover the whole front of this. So I have to decide if I want that up one side or I want it on the bottom. It's hard to decide because I guess I'm going to do it that way. All righty, we'll do it that way. And... We can, hmm. I am not working so well here. Now, the other one that I did in the camper, um, the one I showed at the beginning of this video, really, I just put the pages on there. I just, <laughs> just slapped them right on there with some glue. Um, and then I, I cut or tore around the edge and I didn't have a paper cutter with me. So what I did was I took my ruler and I tore it. But I don't want to do this edge this way because the other edges are smooth. Um, the other edges on the book pages were already kind of raw. So let's see, paper cutter. I haven't been in my craft room in several days because we left Friday and came back Sunday but I didn't do anything Sunday because, well, I was dizzy, or than usual. <laughs> and, um, as my husband would say, and uh, I didn't do much yesterday. I was catching up on stuff yesterday. So, and resting, and so I didn't get into my craft room. I did a, a couple of things. I did sew that envelope um, the signature into the the envelope journal that I showed at the beginning but that was it um, caught up on a couple of TV shows and I just sort of took it easy I did like four loads of wash because <laughs> you know there's always laundry when you come back from a trip right no matter what the trip even three days so there was laundry and I had some other stuff I had to wash. And... So, yeah. And again, I can't glue and carry on a conversation, I guess. Now, on this stick of glue, it does say you have to go over everything twice. And I can see where it's sort of not covering a hundred percent as thick as other places but I'm hoping also that <laughs> it doesn't dry too fast because this is a very large surface but this is a good way to use 12 by 12 paper packs too because um, especially if you have smaller envelopes it, it's a really nice way to use up paper packs that Maybe you're not so thrilled with the paper for inside a journal or for ephemera or whatever, but it's a good way to to use sheets of it, and somebody else might like it. So, fumble fingers. So I am going to put it on so this is... Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh! I... You see how fast that's stuck? I can't get over how fast this stuff sticks. Holy moly. Alright, I have to concentrate, so I might be silent. Oh, this is not going to work well. Okay. Well, 
for the most part. Now, what I could have done, that's interesting. What I could have done is I could have um, wrapped that around this edge here. Or not, I could have wrapped it, well, I could have left it long enough. But then it would have been short up here. Um, but you have to fill in this part anyway. I could have made that edge come over the edge so you don't see the red of the envelope. But the red of the envelope, the edge, is really going to blend in a lot, I think, with this paper. Um, the other thing you can do is you could do this side first and then wrap the front around. I didn't plan ahead, as usual. So I didn't do that because I'm trying to rush through this so I can get it all in one video, hopefully. All right. So there's a little bit of white showing over here. Um, I will probably go back and trim that up from the back of the paper. And then, of course, if your edges don't stick really well for any reason, I go back with my art glitter glue and do up under the edges. And again, you can use any glue you want to to get this to work. So let's see. Um, I think I'm going to do the, the back side in this. And so what I did to measure the back sides was, and I could wrap this around, the, leave it wide enough to wrap around the front. Like, I don't want to bend it too much. Well, anyway, it would wrap around like that. So you could do that. Um, since I already put the paper on the front, I don't think that would look very finished that way. So I'm not going to do it with this page. Um, what I am going to do is I am going to first, this is where I ran into my other problem. I didn't do, wow, that's a mess. <laughs> uh, come on out, yay. I did not glue this down very well. And these flaps do, when, when you're trying to stick stuff in this envelope, it does make a difference if these flaps are not, not glued down. Now this flap here is sort of torn a little bit. That's okay, you're going to cover that up. But I would try and glue that loose edge down right there. And this side as well. I don't know why that didn't didn't stick in the first place when I glued it. And of course you want to make sure the inside isn't isn't gluing down. So typically on most envelopes I find I have to glue the edges of these flaps down there. Um, this one again same way. They don't, I don't know, they jip you out of the glue that should be on it. <laughs> I don't know why. And because you're going to be putting things in and out of that, you don't want that flap loose. Because there's going to be paper covering up to here. Well, actually up to here on this. And when you do that, um, you know, you have to make sure your edges are glued down really, really well to that paper. Or it's whatever you put in here is always going to catch and it's going to end up ripping it. You don't want that. All right. So, um, what I do with the other piece of paper it's underneath? There we go. So what I do? <laughs> welcome to my world. Now I don't. I want to cover up the red corners up here. You could cut them over a little bit. Since these are so high, I might actually do that. You can cut these just, just. Maybe, if you're more coordinated than I. I'm going to cut that down just the littlest bit. Can you see this piece of paper? That's all, that's all I cut off, but it's going to make a difference on these corners. Because these corners go right up to the flap, where the, where the flap folds. And I don't want my paper up that high, because it'll make it really tough to get things in and out. And it'll make it tougher on the um, the 
the signature as well. So before I do anything, I am going to fold that there and I am going to fold it where the edge of the envelope is meeting this flap. And that basically is where you're going to sew your signature in. Now, if you don't want to sew a signature in, that's fine too. Like in the other envelopes, you don't have to sew one in. You can slide a booklet in here and slide a booklet in here and have two sets of signatures that are removable. Or you can put one in one and use the other for coupons and stuff. Um, whatever floats your boat. So I am going to measure this. And I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to measure and mark. So this is going to come down to there. <sighs> And I'd rather err on the side of too big because I can cut it down with scissors. Okay. And the paper cutter because I cannot cut a straight line no matter what. Even with a paper cutter. At least then I can blame the paper cutter. Not the operator. Okay. Oh no! Where's my other mark? There it is. I think. All right. Let me see. This is going that way. So if I cut that, yeah. Sometimes I really have to stop and think. If I cut it one way, I will have enough to cover this one, hopefully. We hope, as well as the other one. So now, oh, yeah. Only if we cut it first, right? <laughs> there it is. I thought I cut my mark off. Oh my gosh, Martha. Okay. Let's see. Is it this one? Yeah. Yeah. Now this is this is not like heavy cardstock, but it's a heavy weight paper, which I like for this because as you're putting things in and out of the envelope, it's going to get some wear and tear. So I have not figured out a, a really good way of. Um, I saw somebody stick their paper in like this, right, and draw here. But when I did that, it did not work out well. And I'm really tempted to try it again. Maybe I will. Should I be brave? You don't know. I don't know if I can be that brave. <sighs> I will say that this ruler, the zero center ruler, came in really handy when I was doing my signatures and sewing them in. Okay, I'm trying not to stick my face into the camera. It's one thing that I I don't like to do. Now, I'm leaving extra space here because I can always cut it down further. Again, I'd rather err on the side of too little than too much. Or to be oversized rather than not not enough so we'll see I have another piece of this paper I think I hope so there's my mark from the inside of the envelope I saw somebody else do this I don't remember who might have been Gail I don't think Gail watches me so um, but I watch her or I don't know who it was it was somebody I did something with an envelope, and they did that, and I was like, ooh. Now, the last time I tried this, it didn't work. Oh, <gasps> it worked. Well, mostly. Yeah? 
I'm pretty happy with that. I just got to get it glued on the right way now. It's a little bit, just a teeny bit shy around the edges. But, um, okay. Now, if I could find the other envelope I showed you at the beginning. <laughs> oh my gosh, how do I lose things? Here it is. What I did in this one was um, I did not cut down as far as the opening of the envelope itself. Um, so you can see this is not as deep as the actual envelope opening is way down here and comes out this way. So I didn't do that one as deep because I wasn't brave enough to do this. But we're going to try and go with the flow here. And um, give this a go. Go with the flow and give it a go. Just maybe that should be my new motto. Oh boy. I shouldn't have done it that way. I should be don't do as I do, do as I say. I should be gluing this. This is where the edge is going to meet. I may have, if you glue that, <laughs> which I did, we'll see what happens. You could run into a problem where um, if it overlaps at all, it's going to glue your envelope shut. So gluing the envelope itself is probably a wiser idea. And since this is only the second one I've done like this, well, the first one where cutting it this way was a success, I, I don't want to, um, I, I don't have all the instructions down pat yet. I'm working on it. I'm working on being better at showing people what I do. I, I don't consider what I do tutorials. <laughs> Because God knows I'm not the, the smart one here. Um, I've watched lots of things that other people have done. And I kind of let it try and grow on that. Alright, so my edges, I could have cut it a little wider. I knew it fit inside that envelope way too easy. So this edge is a little shy. There's some red showing. I don't know if I'll let that bother me or not. Just gonna go with the flow, not sweat the small stuff. Sure, making sure this isn't sticking inside. There is a little glue there from when I tried to glue the paper instead of the envelope. So my process, you know, leaves a little to be desired. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and this one, because I pre-cut the paper, it's gonna be a little shy on this one too. Oh well. So see, this fits in the in the envelope pretty well. A little tough. Oh my goodness gracious. This one's a little tougher than the other one. I thought this envelope was larger. And you do have to make sure it's all the way to the bottom, because if it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, you know, you're going to be shy some paper. It's, it's going to be too too short. But again, I'm going to measure with some extra so it can, in case I am a little shy on the bottom up there, I can play around with it. Alrighty. So I live in Virginia and UVA won the championship last night. That's kind of cool. Um, my husband was rooting for UVA. So it's nice that they won. And his birthday is tomorrow. So it was fun because of that. And we are going to go have lunch with our granddaughters. So he's, he's excited about that. And that's really, really nice. 
Um, they're having a special day tomorrow where family can come and join them for lunch. Yeah, see now if I'd been smart, this paper I would have overlapped and then put the other paper on second. So make note of that. You might want to put your pocket side paper on first. Make it a little longer on the edges and overlap it. Oops, shoot. Oh, Martha. I tell you, I have the noisiest next door neighbors ever. The guy that used to live there, he passed away. It was empty for like a year. And I didn't have to worry about that noise and everything. Now there's like 10 people living over there. Every time we turn around, somebody else is moving in. So, oh, come on. Alrighty, let's see how we do here. Oh my gosh, this stuff sticks really fast. I know, I've said that 10 times this, this video, but it really does. <laughs> and I did the paper again, didn't I? Look at that. Don't do as I do. Do the envelope. Oy. I don't learn from my own mistakes. So I'm going to cut this just, just a tad because, well, no, I'm not. This side is overlapping a tad bit, so I'm going to make sure that that doesn't get glued down. Now see, some of my edges, glue sticks just, I don't know what it is with me and glue sticks. On the book page papers, it was working pretty well, but this one seems to be coming up a bit. So I just take my art glitter glue because it has such a nice fine point. I am going to just glue that puppy down. I, I hope you can see what's happening. So if I have any doubts whatsoever, I put some of this great glue in there. Man, it is hot. It got really hot really fast here in Virginia. After tomorrow, I think, it's supposed to cool down again. And I am so grateful. I don't do hot. I don't do heat and humidity well at all. And it snowed in Maine, so I'd rather be up there right now. Honest to goodness. Too hot, too fast here. Okay, so if there's any more loose edges, um, you know, I will go around them before I finish them off. So there's... There's that. So this is just another way of being able to do it. Or you can use book pages. You can collage anything you want over this. Now this book page, I had enough that I was able to fold it over the glue spot here on the envelope. I always try and cover that with something. Now, oh, Timber. This is really pretty here, and I would probably just leave that um, this is a whole different color. It's pink and gold, but those colors are in this paper. So I'm okay with that. Um, and I may make this a little girlier than the other one. The other one's not too girly, I don't think. There's no lace or anything like that on it. So now we have to cover this. I mean, I don't have to, but I cover this. So... See, that's just shy of being enough. <laughs> so, I don't know. Sometimes when I do these videos, I wonder why I, I struggle. Why I force myself to do them, because then I struggle. So I could do that. Um, let me see if I have another... Let me get to grab the paper pad again. Because I really like the paper that's on the inside. 
I don't know if I have another one. Yep, I do. Usually these paper pads come with at least two of each paper. I'm going to leave this over here because I might use it again. Okay. And I'm trying to use up paper pads I have that I don't think I would use with anything else. Like, I never see myself making a mermaid journal. This would be perfect for it, but, but I don't see myself doing that. So, but it is, I mean, it's pretty. It's flowers and butterflies, and I like that. So it's kind of tropical looking. Um, so I am... Let's see. So this goes this way. Not that it really matters, I don't think. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to glue on the envelope flap. And then... put the paper on and then I'm gonna cut the paper around the flap. Methinks. Methinks, methinks. Alrighty. <laughs> Did this once already. I think this way. Uh oh. the flap so just cut up around it actually actually I think I hope I didn't I am going to cut can you see what I'm doing I'm cutting out wider than the flap way wider Probably not evenly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in. So if I thunk that through, which obviously I didn't, well, it's going to work out okay. I think I'll cut this side off. Mm. Okay. I am working completely backwards today, aren't I? Okay. Let's see what happens now. Eh, that'll do. I'll I'll fix that up. So what I did on my other one was to use my art glitter glue oh, my pin fell out use my art glitter glue for this maybe Oop, there it comes that's what happens when you don't keep the pin in it I do have to say that the pin that came with the art glitter glue must be thicker diameter than the steel pins you can buy in a store because it really, the pin I'm using from the store really does not keep, um, keep it from drying a little bit. Um, it's much looser in the bottle than the pin that came with it. So if you get the art glitter glue, it might be worth it to get the replacement pins for the top. 
Um, yeah. Just a suggestion for those of you that might be looking for art glitter glue, which I got mine on Amazon. Now see, I have a gap there, and I don't like that. And I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty upset now. This might be my positive words journal. This one may not be going anywhere. Because I'm not really happy that this paper is separating. That's where if you have a piece of paper that covers this whole area, you're probably better off without a um, seam separation there. But you know, this is just for purposes of showing you what you can do. All right, so I've got the glue covered up here, the glue strip on the envelope flap. And let me see where I'm at. Oh my goodness, 45 minutes. That does not give me much time. Okay, so quick version. Uh, what I did was I measured this out of the way. I measured <laughs> how many times can I start this sentence? Let me get some stuff out of the way. I measured to see if my papers would fit and really these papers are too wide. So I'm probably yeah see it sticks up so I'm going to have to cut these papers down just a tad, and I will do that. And I want to put a piece of tracing paper in there, so that's going to have to be cut down too. So let's see if I can cut all these at once without ruining them. And of course I just put the paper cutter back down in it. Okay, four legs on the desk. Uh, <laughs> oh golly, I'm not going to do it that way because I know I'll mess them up. Okay, I have to do the tops. I don't, I don't normally do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them on that line. I try not to do more than one at a time. See, I'm trying to rush. So there's a line right here on my paper cutter. That's how I'm measuring. Okay. And, um, this one might go. Let's see. I'll keep them all. Those are about the same. Well, I have to take another one off. This is taller to begin with anyway. That's better. And I need to take this off. Can I get that? There. Okay. So I have these papers, and then I do have some of these other papers like in the other one, but I don't know if I'm going to use all these plant ones or not. Um, I mean, it is a floral, floral journal. I'll use that one. There's three of those. I'll use that one. I guess I could use that one. Um... I don't think I'm going to use these two. So, what I did, I don't know if I'll need that again. What I did was folded these in half. Now, if you don't want to sew your signature in, I will show you what what the other option is that I've done on some of the other ones, like the one I showed you. Uh, my goodness. Uh, 
Well, that's interesting. Because that is not cut on that top end straight at all. But nobody will notice. All right. So, to that. I'm going to put that in there. And I'll take that and open that up. And then if I want to take this one, I'll fold that in half. And this will have to be cut down. That this one shouldn't, I don't think, need to be cut down. Maybe a tiny bit. And then this will go in sideways. I'll fold that in half. Rushing, rushing, rushing. And like I said, you could um You could just sew on these so they could be written on. All right, so. I'm taking a chance here doing it this way, but I'm going to give it a shot. I swear this edge is not straight. Oops. All right. So say this is all the pages I wanted to put in here. And say you wanted to not sew your signature in. Or even if you do, you could take a piece of matching paper and wrap the signature in the matching paper. Now that's not going to work because that's cut down too low. But you could do that and uh, like this one. You can wrap it in here, cut this down to size, and you could just <laughs> you could just slide it into the slot instead of sewing it in. You can cover it in this, open this up, and sew it right into the signature, or right into the center of this spine right here. And this is this is what I'm considering my spine between between those two folds that I made from the edge of the envelope and the flap of the envelope. This is where the natural flap of the envelope would fold. So I hope that this helps you. Um, what I will do is I will gather some more pages and I'll do a part two the, to this video because um, I want to finish it and I want to show you guys what I do to finish it off and everything. So I'm going to end this one here because we're at 53 minutes and I can only do one video on my iPad at a time. Then I have to upload it and then I have to delete it and then I have to do another video so um, I will do part two to this video and then later in the week I can't do it tomorrow Thursday we have somebody coming to measure our kitchen I may be able to do it Thursday afternoon or maybe Friday sometime in the next five or six days I will continue on with the lavender journal um, I haven't really worked on the the um, ephemera for it very much because we were away and because there's been a lot going on. So I will get back to that one and I will make the part two of this um, either later today or sometime along the way. You'll see it. I I'll put it out there. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this gives you a start of how to do a two envelope journal. And for those of you doing your 100 day projects, it's really not that hard. Um, sometimes I make things look a lot harder than they really are. So if you have saved any of these envelopes, even if they're smaller, um, smaller envelopes would do just fine. I have a whole bunch of, um, of these size envelopes. And you could do the same thing with this size envelope. This one I did as a trifold, um, and I wasn't planning on sewing any signatures in it. This one I'm just gonna slide small pads in once I decorate it so I didn't leave any space here uh, but if you wanted to do a double one and just do a double one out of smaller envelopes 
make sure that you leave the space there because you can't put too much paper in um, if, if you leave no space like that. Um, something like this is good for coupons or um, just in your purse for notes or whatever. So I have not finished that one yet. Um, I, got, I got started on this one and so yeah. I'm, I'm like a butterfly. I flip from one thing to the other. So I hope you guys all have a great day. Look for part two. I promise I will do it. And uh, thanks for watching. And again, I really appreciate it. If you haven't, please subscribe. If you'd like to, give me a thumbs up if you think this video was okay. <laughs> I know I have some improving to do. I'm working on it. But thanks for watching. It really does mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. Um, take care. Bye.